Welcome to Leadership Rediscovered. This is a continued conversation from last week's episode with Bill Simon. Please enjoy part two. Yeah, I think so. Another thing as I'm listening to you, I think about something else that I find unique about you that you have like these all these dichotomies going on. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you have this high EQ, you have a lot of empathy, a lot of care and concern for people, but you're also a very results driven oh, yeah. person. And that was a problem. <laughs> yeah. So how do you <laughs> how do you do that? I mean you've you've shared, you know, a couple examples of having conversations with people, but sometimes I think people confuse uh, if you care about someone, then, you know, it's okay to lower your standards or maybe mm. you can't have high standards and also get results. And I'd just love to hear your perspective on that because I, you know, obviously yeah, so, with that so how thought. about another shout out for Mylan um, awareness, because this was a transformational moment for me, which was the insights training that yeah, we did. Yeah. So the red, yellow, love blue, it. green, we mm -hmm. did that at McCormick and yes. I am a flaming, flaming hot red. <laughs> Um, and no. uh, shocker. So, so, but I also, you know, maybe to address your question head on, I think, um, you lack empathy without clarity, mm. meaning, meaning if you're not, you, if you don't display courage relative to what your expectations are, mm -hmm. that leads to ambiguity, right? Yes. Lack of clarity. And, yes. and frankly, high performers want to be held to a high standard. They right. want, they, but they want that clarity. They're like, okay, well, what does success look like? Mm -hmm. And, and having the courage, frankly, to have spirit of debate, mm -hmm. which I do with my VPs. Yeah. And, and I love folks that feel like I'm not, this is not a shout out that they can do more of it, but I love, I do love folks that challenge me. Absolutely. Right. It, mm -hmm. Respectfully. And they're, yes. and they're bringing problems and solutions concurrently. But I think, um, Again, another lesson learned later in life, which – and I, I've coached folks uh, as recently at McCormick. I call them the high reds. And, mm -hmm. and McCormick is a very blue culture. Okay. Where very Mylan, analytical. Yeah, and I, I viewed not... Mylan as a hybrid blue-red. Yes. Is that fair? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very. So it was yeah, an interesting – It's really – yeah. Yeah. A like, combination and I would say McCormick, McCormick is blue, like really blue. Okay. Um, very um, – very regimented, very financial, and it served as well. So this is an, yeah. I mean, this is a very old company, and old is a compliment because yeah, it's been successful for a long time. Exactly. Right. And it and and it's and and what processes, procedures, and um, and uh, principles financially, most notably, that are in place have served it so well. Yes. Right. So yes. that is so it's not meant to be anything other than a statement. Yes. Because I think you can be a successful yellow company as much as you can sure. red. So and folks will have to obviously read up on insights as to what the heck yes. these colors mean. Yes. But red is a flaming hot desire to be results oriented, right? Yes. And that's me. Competitive, and so the, fast right. pace. Yeah. So the lesson so hark hearkening back to lessons learned mm -hmm. is when you know and I think this is what Mylan did do, which is the awareness of when you're up against a, a data-driven individual or someone that seeks out harmony mm -hmm. and you're a red, you are in a dangerous spot and you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself because yes. you're going to – you're likely going to bulldoze them and they're going to get disenfranchised mm -hmm. and they're going to disengage. Yeah, you'll lose them. Right. And so I don't – I know for a fact that um, my weakness is when I get super passionate um, mm -hmm. because my ears shut off and my mouth goes, goes too long and – I believe that I've um, curtailed that. I don't know if, necessarily know if everyone around me would agree with that, but um, I, I definitely have worked on that. Um, and I've been classically trained on listening skills, and that's I could probably take a refresher course. But <laughs> but I think can. I think as a red, that results orientation. Back to your question is um, having the confidence that results can come in different forms and sizes, and you can meaning you, the path by which you achieve it, as long as it's not in, encroaching legal standards and moral standards, things of that mm -hmm. nature, that there are various ways to get to that yes. figure. And getting comfortable um, with that discomfort, that it's a path that perhaps you wouldn't have taken. Yes. That I did not. So for me, early, and when I say early, probably through my early 40s, it was, we're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. And and so the bulldoze was there, and whatever was behind me, I – you know, there was carnage. Right. And some of the most valuable um, feedback I got from, again, the boss that I had for 12 years, Greg Newcomb, um, who anyone that's listening that worked at Heinz adored. I mean, he was mm -hmm. just a, a gift. Um, you know, he said, look, you know, 
people that aren't on your team need to feel as special as those that are. Ooh. And I was like, ooh, that is hmm. – it's one of those you know gut punch moments that's really powerful that you can carry away. Yeah. He gave me another one which that also is applicable, which is I need when you are feeling the, the desire to accelerate because of your desire to deliver, mm-hmm. I need you to mentally think about throttling down. Because what you do is you actually throttle up. Yeah, it just adds fuel to the fire. Right, right. And your energy is not being matched. And you're quick. At least he would say that. Again, yeah. my wife would disagree. But And you're overpowering. Yes. And people aren't with you. Yes. And you, they, you think they're with you, but it's it's – you know, you're you're pushing them there versus mm. pulling them along. And it's mm-hmm. much more powerful to pull them along. Absolutely. And again, anyone that's worked with me, you know, in, when, in my early 30s or 40s, is probably like, why is this guy on this podcast? You know, because, you know, he he pushed. He pushed really hard. I mm-hmm. still think I was empathetic, but I, I, I have moderated yeah. dramatically um, – that approach over yeah. the course of time. Do you do you have Does that some... answer your question? I think... Absolutely. Okay. And I and I'm so glad that you went there because I think there's a lot of people that struggle with this and mm-hmm. number one, the awareness. Yeah. So that's huge that you have that awareness. And sometimes, you know, it, it's very helpful to have a mentor, boss, yeah. somebody kind of punch you in the head. Yeah. Three sixty, yeah. whatever it is, right. you know, yeah. someone to sit down and, and give you that feedback. But then I'd love to hear any tactics or strategies that you used, you know, to moderate yourself i mean i know i used to sit on my hands when i wanted to talk i will do this <laughs> i love it like i'm reflecting mm-hmm. but if i'm doing this that means i want to say something but you're literally kind of holding i'm literally back. holding myself back so yeah. if i'm in a meeting and i'm covering my mouth mm-hmm. i have intention i i really am trying to listen I'm really trying to prevent myself from jumping. Yeah. And I'm sure people at home would say, can you please do that like every day? But um, <laughs> the, the, we've never seen you do that. We've never seen you do that. Home. Yeah, my, my daughter's <laughs> most notably. Yeah, I don't like for an opinion with them. But um, <laughs> but I, I'll do that. I okay. will um, – the other one that I, I re- referenced earlier was tell me more about that. Yes. So when you're passionate and you feel – like you can almost feel it, right? And particularly mm-hmm. if, if it's verging on – it's going down a path that you really disagree with and, yeah. you, and you're starting to get upset. Like you feel like yeah, but- it's like and, – and that gets back to another phrase that I was given, frankly, just about three years ago. So this gives you a sense that you're always learning is assume positive intent. Oh, but you, right? huge. 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 I wish I got that at 40 versus 51. And yeah. boy, what a valuable statement. That came from a VP of supply chain who's no longer with um, McCormick, Kurt Craig. And, and Kurt and I had challenges and he's like – and I gave, you know, we, we, it was one of those moments where it was a defining moment for our, for both of our functions, at least I thought so, which is, look, we can't be successful without one another. And I feel like we're combating mm-hmm. one another. And I kind of give you what I see, yeah. but I really want to hear what you see. Yeah. And so we, we got together and, and he gave me that phrase and I'm like, gosh, I wish I had that a while ago. And so I, I think that tell me more about this and assume mm-hmm. positive intent. Like, okay, no one is coming to the building to undermine your function bill or undermine no. you. I, I'd like to think. Yeah, truly. I mean, there are very few people out there that yeah. are truly that malicious. Yeah, right. I, so, I think at the end of the day, everyone's really just trying to do the best that they can. I th- I, I'd like to think. Yeah. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to think. Um, you know, there's definitely pockets where that's not true. Sure. But, <laughs> but I do think that that's the anomaly. And um, – and again, boy, I wish I learned that earlier. Um, mm. And that gets to influence and that gets to rallying a broader cause. Mm-hmm. And frankly, in my role or subsequent roles beyond this, if if I didn't have that skill, I, I wouldn't be in the chair. Yeah. But, you know, that's something that you can, can absolutely refine. So that – those are two, three tactics. Yeah. Some of them are just that's mental. So like that, that gift from Greg, that was when I was – 35, 36 years old, mm-hmm. that throttled down. And I'm like, okay. And he was the one that sent me to the listening class too, which was a Cornell class. I don't know. Jenny, Jenny, oh, I'll look her up on LinkedIn. I'll send it to you. But okay. Jenny from Cornell, she's no longer with Cornell, uh, taught that class and she was awesome. That's awesome. great. Yeah. One of my favorite lines is help me understand. That's but, a good one. That's a good one yeah, too. Because yeah. Because again, you know, you may, to your point, may be going down a certain path that you know and believe is the right path. And yep. I think for you, again, this is where your IQ and your EQ may butt heads too, because you are an analytical person. You you can back those decisions up. If you think um, you're right, you 
you know. I'll go fast. Yeah. So plus that's the desire to execute. Exactly. I, I, I get very I'm very impatient. Yeah. Like I want to go. Same. Yeah. yeah. So then so. it's like, ooh, and but you thank goodness that you value learning and curiosity because for me, that's how I leverage that aspect of my personality too is okay well wait a second maybe i don't know all the answers or maybe i don't have all the information yeah. so help me understand where you're coming from help me understand why you're so passionate that we go this direction and i'm yeah. so passionate that we go this direction yeah. and yep. i think it's a very neutral it statement. is i would say i would say i'm still learning on that front really i mean if i'm being honest and and uh you know again i think uh as Irish, German, passionate, heavy, red, I've got lots of things working against me. ADHD, you know, I, I, like I, I, I've got a lot of things you I got to be make. a real jerk. Now. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty that would say that too. But, um, no, but I, that's the cool thing too, and I think it's important. I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's important to point out that people do change and people do oh, evolve, and yeah. I think sometimes we we don't uh, we carry someone's reputation with them forever mm -hmm. and we don't give them the benefit of it's hard to rebrand yourself it is it's really hard to rebrand yourself and uh particularly if you've had it's yeah it, I, i've watched it and i've coached mm -hmm. i've coached people into um leaving um organizations uh not that i want that it breaks your heart but right. if, you, if you know that they're not their brand has been put in a place where they can't that overcome they can't. it, mm -hmm. it's unfair to them, right? Yes. And and I've been there. I mean, I've absolutely been there. And and I deserve the spot that I put myself in. Um, <laughs> and, and I get it. You don't I, argue I, it. I don't argue it. I don't agree with I don't agree with how it was, you know, deduced, yeah. but you know, in fairness, I put myself there. Yeah. And you can try to weave yourself out, but it comes with maturity, it comes with reflection, mm -hmm. education, you know, yeah, the the notion of self improvement and, and the yes. ability and frankly the ability to reflect and and really, um, you know, I think about, you know, I started to meditate probably 10 years ago. I've done that off and on, yeah. primarily for stress management, but I've got other outlets now, as you know. Yeah. Um, but um, meditation is a really powerful, clarifying uh, place. And if you are a hard charger, boy, is that counter to everything that you believe, mm -hmm. which is to pause, reflect. Mm -hmm. and get into a mind space that it, you're at peace with yourself. You know what yes. I mean? Yes, yes. So, yeah. There's a lot of people that really struggle with that. They'll just outright say, I can't do it. I can't meditate. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm good. Which and is I don't... a great reason to try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And I I, um, I should do it more is what I would say. I'm not, you know, it's not like every day I'm, I'm sitting, you know, um, <laughs> on a mat and uh, meditating. But right. I, I'm at least conscious of um, where my blind spots are, too. And yeah. I think that comes with time, too. I think so too. Yeah, I'm so. going to springboard off the meditation yeah, yeah, yeah. topic uh -oh. because I know um, that you are an avid cyclist. Yes. Cycler. How do you say it? Cyclist. cyclist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this could take us an hour. Right? I, that's yeah. all right. That's yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, but I do want to hear because, again, I know that you're a very busy executive, yet you also make time to bring physical fitness into your world. And, and I do think of you as a healthy person. So I'm just curious because I know it can be really hard for any of us, but yeah. especially uh, executives. How has that impacted your life? What are the things that you do? How do you prioritize that? Yeah, so that, again, came later in life. Um, and it came after the death of my dad. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched him struggle. He was a young, I consider a young man. He was 66 years old. Wow. Yeah, so diabetic, um, overweight, um, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, had a lot of things working against him. And, you know, I, I, I was 39 at the time. And I was probably 240 pounds. I'm sitting here today at 183. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a little waif of what I used to be. And <laughs> I would say the one thing that I haven't perfected, which anyone anyone that knows me, I I ride to eat and I don't eat well. Um, so I'm, I used to have a shirt that said, I run to eat chocolate run to, cake. Yeah, I, I have um, – yeah, my motivation is calorie neutral riding. That's kind Love of it. it. So, so the catalyst event was my dad passing, and I really – you know, at that point in time, I had two young girls, uh, six mm -hmm. and three. And, um, you know, it was, it was a stressful time for us as a family, and, mm -hmm. and you know, those moments – you know, those, those are huge catalyst moments, right, as it relates to, you know, where am I, yes. you know, and am I in a good place? Mm -hmm. And is this, you know, is this path that I'm on and what he went through, am I am I on a similar journey? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And I didn't feel like I, it was completely analogous, but, boy, it, it, it really hit me 
emotionally, spiritually, on, on multiple dimensions, yeah. it hit me, as, as it would with, with anybody. Mm-hmm. And so um, I didn't find cycling. I started working out um, okay. immediately. It was elliptical. It was, you know, um, it, I can't run because I've, I've got arthritis and I'm, I'm just a mess when it comes to that. So it was always low impact stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there's only so many hours you can spend on elliptical before you go crazy. <laughs> Right. It and is like being on a hamster wheel. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm like, I'm, especially for that ADHD is not good for that. No, and, and there was no streaming either. There was no Netflix yes, back then, right? Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm DVDing, you know, whatever it was. I can't even remember what shows I was watching, but I think it was How I Met Your Mother. Uh, but, but nonetheless, you know, I'm going through these, and I'm like, okay, this, and I didn't, I didn't feel like I was breaking through. Like I, I kind of plateaued. Mm-hmm. And I got I got the weight down, and I you know I I was sleeping better, I was feeling better, but I didn't I didn't feel like I fully achieved it, and so I I got back and I was a, I didn't cycle per se, but I I loved to get out yeah. um, when I was younger in my twenties, and I, I had a similar experience where I lost a ton of weight. And I'm like you know what maybe I'll do that, and so I start I bought a bike, um, and uh, and I started riding, and then and then the bug that got me, and here's another Heinz reference, is a guy by the name of Stu Mason who I mm-hmm. absolutely adore, who's um, a finance guy by trade, but a cyclist too. And, and he's like, you should go out with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Stu, I, I think was trying to convince me not to ride cause he kicked my <laughs> butt. Um, and I'm like, I just want to ride flat roads cause that's all I ever did. Right. And he took me up into the hills of Pittsburgh oh my and, gosh. and the first year I did, you know, maybe 1200 miles. And, Jeez. and then all of a sudden I'm like, gosh, I feel different. I feel mm-hmm. good. And so I won't belabor the journey, but, you know, last year I did 13,500 miles. Oh, my gosh. So I spent a Wait, lot. what does that average, because, you know, I'm not a mathematician. Yeah. What does that average out to on, like, a it's, it's, weekly, I do about, daily oh, kind um, of basis? I do an average of 40 miles when I ride. Wow. 40 to 50. I just did a 100-mile charity ride last yes. weekend uh, in Columbus cool. for uh, cancer, which um, several family members in my in my immediate family, have uh, had bouts with cancer and survived, so I felt really compelled. I, I don't race. Um, it's all just really for physical fitness. And you ride I, for a long time. I mean, this I do. Is... I'll do two and a half, three hours before work. Yeah. I, I will leave at five. So I think what what I've done, um, and and certainly it comes with um, f- flexibility. I think is um, a direct reflection of the company you work for. Mm-hmm. What what values do they have? McCormick is remarkably um, flexible with me and others, everyone, in my opinion, relative to family, relative to community, relative to health. Mm. I I feel like I've just landed a a sweet spot as it relates to what I can do. So my amplification of cycling actually came while I was at McCormick. I mean, it was certainly starting at Milan. Yeah, I think you were still somewhat on the elliptical journey when I I knew you too. I I was starting to cycle, but not not that. I mean, maybe 3,000 miles. Yeah. So, So I will go out early. I have a group of friends both I have a house in Jersey and I have a house in Pittsburgh and um, I've got wonderful friends that I've met over the years that are avid cyclists that have similar passions and just wonderful human beings um, probably close to 20 25 great people that I've met that I would have never met before right right yeah, you have this whole little community that yeah you've built. so it came from um, you know really unfortunate space it um, it led to um, a lot of productivity for me personally mm-hmm. um, I had blood pressure issues. I had, you know, I, I was overweight. Um, and now I, you know, I don't have blood pressure issues. I, I have, you know, my, so my, my physical health is, is big. And I think, and I've had other instances prior to starting that journey where stress was also having an impact on Mm -hmm. me, which you also alluded to in, in, when we were opening up for this. And I think, you know, anyone that allows that to eat you up is, 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 is playing with fire. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people, um, have some really unfortunate events with with stress, and it doesn't. Yes. You know, someone can look incredibly fit, and um, and they can I, think they're they yeah. got it together. You know. So I view it as it has to happen, not mm-hmm. that whether it's going to happen. And my leadership team and my team knows that I view it that way, and I also espouse it to others. Meaning, awesome. I don't really care what you do to be healthy, but I want you to be healthy. Yes, and I don't care when you choose to do it Mm -hmm. as long as you're getting your job done so if you do it first thing in the morning if you choose to do it at two o'clock in the afternoon and that's your time Mm -hmm. i want you to block that time i want you to and by the way that you know i i don't get to ride every day like if my boss calls calls a meeting i I, okay i gotta go but um for the most part i've been afforded the flexibility i've made it a priority and i and and you know uh, um i'm afforded that and i think we've afforded others in our community to do that too 
but that's so important. Yeah, I I, I didn't learn that um, for a while either, and um, and you know, and had medical setbacks and had challenges, and mm-hmm. and and fortunately, not so much in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. So. So what do you tell yourself when you have those days where you've got a million things on the to-do list and you're like, maybe I should just go into the office and skip that ride today? I, I Well, I don't think that's happened recently but because <laughs> I'm so passionate. I'm really just so Which passionate. Which is great. Yeah, yeah. I, well, and, and, and I do, I would say, a number of my rides are, in, are just by myself. Yeah. And, um, and, and I find that the headspace that transpires, yes. meaning what I can process and what I can – because I'll be – I'll be thinking, I'll be, and I will take notes. I'll pull over off my bike and I'll take some notes. I'll take, I'll send an email to myself. Um, My, the clarity that comes with that for Mm -hmm. me, doesn't happen for everybody, but for Mm -hmm. me, it provides that. So I view it as a tool. Yeah, you actually are working. Yeah, Your brain I well, doesn't stop. I don't, I I don't mean, think. It, yeah. yeah, my boss wouldn't agree with that, but right. he, but but he's highly supportive, and as have the previous three. Um, and you know, in my mind. If I weren't getting the work done, if mm-hmm. you know, or if somebody on my team wasn't getting the work done, and they and they viewed yes. that as a priority. But I've got several cyclists on my team. I've got folks that are massively passionate about um, their triathletes, you know, That's and awesome. and others that you know that will do CrossFit or mm-hmm. other things that they need to do just to get that that stress level down and and that clarity of purpose and thinking. So I I, I don't. It's pretty rare for me to allow what you described to happen. Good. Because I view it that as that important. Because with I know what I am without it. Yes. And, and I'm not. And I'm not effective. Yeah, and I'm not effective. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm. I don't have the same energy level. I don't mm-hmm. have the um the 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 staying power for engagement. Mm-hmm. And these are long days. You mm-hmm. know, my meetings start typically eight thirty nine, and they go until six seven o'clock. Yeah. You know, it's a long day. Yes. And there's weeks. There's night. There's you know it's. I found the balance for me and my family. It's not perfect, but it works for us. Um, but in the absence of that outlet, I, I know for a fact I, I would have problems on yeah. multiple fronts, you know? Yes, I do. And I think it's important, too, because you've, you set yourself up as a good role model for that team that they – it gives them a permission slip to prioritize it as well. Because I think sometimes, I mean, again, you've got that power differential going on. It sure. doesn't matter what level you are in the company. You know, if, if you have someone that you report to, you're automatically going to be There's a cautious. bit of mir- yeah, mirroring and mimicking. Yeah, right? and yep. you know, what's accepted, what's not accepted. Is this safe? Is this okay? Yeah, I wanna make sure that I come across as hardworking and competent and high performing and all those good things. And it's like, oh, okay, well, if he's doing it and he says that it works for him and it's okay for me to do it too, yeah. I mean, you give them that permission slip. A hundred percent. I think, you know, one of, you know, not to digress too much, but you know, one of the few benefits of COVID is it taught us the importance of that balance yes. in a big way. Just, I, I mean, I, I, I am not, you know, Zoom fatigue for me is very real. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's remarkable. And what, and you can see it with your team. Yes. Um, and I'm like, look, you've got to, I don't, you know, I, I call it the passive meeting. And, and some of my meetings are passive meeting. I'm transmitting something. You don't have to part, you don't have yeah. to necessarily participate. You have to listen. Yeah. I said, but if you want to walk during my meeting, oh, okay, yeah. go. Like, yeah. get out. So we, we set that standard like, look, you just got to get out. You cannot sit in your chair, in an office, you know, and we're still Zooming at McCormick, which is fine. Yes. But you got you to move. Yes. You got to move. Yes. Right? So, um, so I, I do think, and the company has a, a really great track record as it relates to health, wellness, and taking care of its people. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just feel like this is a natural byproduct of that. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What have we left on the table here? I feel I like know. I literally could me. just keep going yeah, for keep hours going. and hours and hours. And I guess, you know, given all of the learnings that you've had thus far in your career, what currently keeps you up at night as a leader? Yeah, that was one of the questions you hit me with. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, I, can I reference my notes? Absolutely. So, um, I, yeah. So what's, um, it's it'll be cliche, but I'll, I'll put it out there, and, and I see it right now as the war for talent. Yes, is just remarkable. And when I say that, I I think there's 
there's been seismic shifts on so many dimensions of our society. Mm -hmm. Um, And most notably, what COVID did is it reset the bar Mm -hmm. as it relates to what work is and what it is not. (laughs) And it's not only just, and then you've also got generational differences. I see it in my kids. So now I'm at the stage where I'm like, okay, where are their values intersecting with what my values were at that same stage of my life and early career? It's really fascinating. And so the ability for leadership um, and I just had this with one of my VPs, like, hey, what should our expectation be for people in, in role? Like, how long should they stay? I stayed two years when I started. I'm like, that's not what they expect. Like, they feel like mastery of craft happens within a year or less, right? So there's that dimension of speed yes. and, and, tr- and how transient things, particularly at the early stages of the recruitment process. Right. There's um, – Hyper learning, hyper hyper growth as it relates to experience, and you think about just how um, younger generations, uh, you know, not that I'm dating myself, but I am, like how they consume data, how they consume media. Everything's just faster and more. And, yeah, it's yeah. it's a and it's and the processing power is there. Yes. So um, that's interesting, and then there's a set of conditions like that. I you know I was fortunate that I didn't have to move, mm-hmm. um, but. Most on my team have, and most of those that are in the director or VP level have moved many, many times, and yes. that is not the reality today. Yeah, so, and that used to be a main stipulation, sure. especially in larger companies, sure. that if you wanted to progress up in the cur- in the company, you had to physically had to do it, right? move. Yeah, my uncle yeah. did it, my dad, not so much, but mm-hmm. um, and, and countless salespeople for sure. And, and now yeah. it's, you know, you've got, you know what, my wife has got a great job or my husband's got a great mm-hmm. job, and I'm not willing to do this. And yes. And I love Austin, or I love Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. or I love whatever. Or you know, I want to pick... work remote, and right. I don't want to go into a building anymore. <laughs> yeah, so now that challenges the narrative, and it challenges how you recruit. And yes. and you've got, and then the other thing that's really fascinating is you've got a set of employees that are there with a set of conditions, mm-hmm. and now the the conditions are changing. Yeah. So I think that from a rec- the war on talent and just. Um, what the currency is beyond compensation mm-hmm. is being redefined pretty rapidly. Yes. The other one that, that keeps me – so that's one that keeps me up at night. Um, we haven't had a, a heavy um, retention issue, which is we're that's blessed. Yeah, yeah, that's blessed. That speaks to the company and and the leaders underneath me and, and everything else. But um, I think uh, the other one for me, which I think is true for many, is um, competency relevancy, meaning mm. – um, the competencies that made you successful yesterday are moving so fast, Ooh, right? So yes. what a sales, you know, we call it the migration from sales manager to general manager. Mm-hmm. So what it takes to be successful across the desk mm-hmm. with a Walmart, a Kroger, and Albertsons is so much more multivariable, multidimensional, multifunctional mm-hmm. than uh, where it was 10 years ago or five years ago when I started my journey, you know, eight years ago when I started my journey at McCormick. So yeah. even my framing of, the, the story I use with Randy on revenue management thing that's like that's like table stakes that stuff that stuff was not necessarily revolutionary but yeah. um, it was certainly very different for McCormick at the time and it was yes. pretty different for the industry well now it's like everyone's got a revenue growth management team everyone everyone has a you know a series of capabilities on Omni and digital and but the salesperson, their bag in terms of what they're expected to influence has grown 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 mm-hmm. and not all those competencies come with experience. Some of it comes through influence. Where do I go? Yes. How do I acquire this? And so it gets back to that hiring process on, you know, agility, learning orientation, general management. Like, do you want a general manager calling on Walmart or do you want a salesperson calling right. on Walmart? And 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 also, you know, frank, frankly, not all customers are created equal like any sure. industry and, and certain requirements are different. So that competency um, – mapping slash you know call it um revolution Mm -hmm. contemporization Mm -hmm. um all of that to me i don't feel like we're moving fast enough i really do that that to me makes me uncomfortable because to me the biggest contract i have with my team beyond clarity of purpose and safety and the things that they would expect in any relationship with a leader is putting them in a position to be successful yeah. Full stop. Like yeah. I've got to put them in a position to be successful. I always tell my team, like, we are around our table because there are almost a, now 225 people that are depending on us to make the right call on their behalf. Yes. And that is – Huge responsibility. Right. Yeah, yeah. And and I love that. But, yeah. but you know, I always – that's where I get 
agitated or uncomfortable, not agitated meaning upset, Mm -hmm. more like, ooh, I'm I'm unsettled because have we done enough? Yeah. You know, have we done enough to Mm -hmm. put them in a position or have we created centers of excellence to augment capacity? Right, Right, because Because, there's so much emphasis placed on getting people in the door, but then once they're in the door, how do you continue to figure out, are they still that right person for that role? Yeah, and that evolves. Are they better served for somewhere else? I mean, what do you do with them, you know, once they're in the door to make sure that they can keep growing and and evolving? I think we do a decent job. We're not perfect. I mean, we're not a huge organization like some of our, um, you know, consumer products peers, but Mm -hmm. we do have quite a bit, you know. But in my mind, that's that's a forever perfectible um, objective mm-hmm. is to put your people in a position to be successful. And, Absolutely. um, and I, I, I feel, you know, COVID has been, um, an interesting time to reflect, but it also has put many organizations in duress mode on mm-hmm. supply chain on infl- and inflation is obviously just one that's remarkable in that, yeah. you know, w- we have, we, we are literally activating, right? We are, we are working to activate versus, okay, we need to reflect because this thing is still moving. Yes. Still evolving. Yes. And the practical reality is the activation bucket is overflowing, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that our people don't need this contemporization work. So we've actually mm-hmm. started to reembark on some of that, but that's what, you know, again, those two, those two are probably my biggest. Yeah. Um, as it relates to work, yes. you know, yes. what keeps me up at night most is making sure my girls are safe and they're, <laughs> right. they're loved and they're cared for and they're, yes. they're successful, but beyond yeah. the family. Yeah. Um, that's what keeps me up at night. Yeah. That, yeah. And I, I realized I didn't ask you the very important question oh. that I ask all my guests, Uh-oh. which is what is your definition of leadership? Oh, uh, you know, so I, I, oh. <laughs> I actually wrote this one down. Um, I I struggled most with this one. Really, uh, I did. Yeah, because uh, well, first of all, far be it for me to define it. And um, uh, so, Bill Simons. Bill definition Simons' of definition for Bill. Yeah, for Bill. For Bill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, well, I would tell you what what has kind of struck me is uh, I do think um, the ability to craft um, a vision, mm-hmm. um, a story that. Um, tugs on the heartstrings that is beyond just the fundamentals of the work. Yeah. And I've succeeded sometimes at that. And I think at McCormick right now, I need to reinvigorate that. Mm. Um, I feel like I started great. Mm-hmm. And then we went into a, a space most notably recently to just pure execution mode. And I feel yeah. like we just re- need to rekindle that. So that's just me being very honest. But I think the best windows is when that rally has hit a bullseye mm-hmm. and folks – feel like they've crafted it, yeah. um, they've had a chance to influence it, and then the rally almost, it's, it's, there's so much momentum behind that rally, mm-hmm. right? So that, that ability to, to storytell, to paint that vision, to paint where we're going and why mm-hmm. um, in a very thoughtful, humble, um, vulnerable fashion is really, really important. The other thing that I wrote down is I, I, I personally have um, – always felt invigorated by folks that have um, stretched me to the point where I did something I didn't think I was that was possible for me personally or professionally. Oh, love that. Right? So, yes. And there's no bigger charge than, I mean, certainly promoting someone and watching them excel as they advance their careers. Yeah. Some of the best moments that you'll ever have as a leader, at least in my opinion. But watching someone unlock mm-hmm. like a portion of them mm-hmm. and – and the excitement that comes with that when that unlock clicks. Yes. And and you've had a chance you, you're not anyone that says they're the architect of that is 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 lying. They they've they've provided the catalyst event perhaps. Yes. They've provided the opportunity for like I, I would say another one for me is um that's really emotional for me is is watching someone that um, is wildly talented that has undervalued their talent and their skill and you've you've you're able to and it gets back to what they you know watching them achieve what they didn't think was possible but the mm-hmm. most 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 rewarding is that yes. in my opinion and I've had so many experiences it usually happens early in someone's career mm-hmm. and I still take a an active role not as much as I'd like because I can't you know I can't frankly just it's not practical. Right. Um, but I do have some 
I, I do have some pretty close relationships with folks that are early stages of their career, or I'm just happen to be a mentor. And um, and oh my gosh, is that that is that is the most um, from a definition of leadership in my mind is is, is teaching them what's possible yeah. and letting them really truly achieve. Yeah, you know and then I mean? watching them go after. That. Yeah, and 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 and. Um, and getting out of the way, yes. you know, like, look, you've got this. Like, let me just mm-hmm. give you a, I'm going to just give you a couple of keys, but there's like 30 keys you got to use, but you just need these two and you're going to, yeah. you're going to just really excel. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Rare. Yeah. So I don't know if that helps, but that, that's how I define it. That's, that's like, that I works. mean, I know we don't actually, it, we're not able we don't, to physically hold we don't, this mic. <laughs> I don't know if that's a mic drop moment, you know, I could do a riff on the mic if you want, you know. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love that. I'm glad that I remembered that I didn't ask that yeah, question it's all good. because it's all we would have missed all of that. All good. What else? What else did I miss? Let's uh, see. Okay. Well, you got definition. Help me out here. Up at, up at night. Oh, you said who person who shaped me the most? Yeah. I think we talked about. Yeah. So, so, so you've had some great. I I have. I've been your very career. really blessed. The ones that you know for me that. So if you want me to answer, the, I assume you want me to answer this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so yeah. I'll I'll name them and um. And uh, they know who they are. But I mentioned Greg. So Greg was by far the most profound because I think he took, you know, um, I, and I, I just admire his patience with mm-hmm. me as a as a flaming hot red. As e- an eager beaver. <laughs> eager beaver that was just, you know, and I was more emotive. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I hadn't learned the nuances of influence. And, and gosh, yeah. he just, he just, he, you know, he put himself out there for me. I mean, he put, he absolutely advocated for me when when I would argue I didn't deserve it mm. you know what I mean like he he put he him, saw that he saw it and I though. think he I think he insulated me I think um and I didn't realize that until later and um and he's you know I I, I haven't seen him in years uh, probably gosh probably seven or eight similar to you know the last time we saw each other live but um I adore him and uh yeah he had a profound impact on me personally professionally and another one that I wrote down was John Bennett, who was my second boss at McCormick. And John and I worked at Heinz for almost a decade, but I never worked for him. I always hmm. worked with him. And um, John is another guy that um, you you reflect on the moments where someone impacts you personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. And, and he did he did that. And he gave me some gifts. He gave me a phrase that I haven't used yet. So I gave you some, oh, some of my favorite yeah. phrases. But one of them is go to the balcony. Go to the balcony. Go to the balcony. Say more about that. So this gets back to, you know, Bill is on a constant learning journey. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, and it gets back to Kurt's statement of a positive intent, but it was before that. So John gave me that gift about probably seven years ago. And he said, Bill, I want you to rise above and see everyone and who they are and what they're trying to accomplish Ooh. before you engage. Ooh. Try to assess their motivations. Try to assess you know, where they're going and, and really let that play out. Um, and it was all under the auspices of, again, execution first Mm -hmm. and figure it out later. Um, and he said the power of them, and it just gets back to that influence role, particularly when you go higher and you've got a broader Mm -hmm. remit, but the pressure's higher, right? So, so that struggle of delivery versus, gosh, I got to wait for all these people to come along for the ride. Um, and do it productively and thoughtfully. So yeah. he he gave me that, and I you know it's one of those ones like throttle down, mm-hmm. positive intent, mm-hmm. go to the balcony. Go to the balcony. I have not heard that. I love that. And another one, which was an HRBP. This is very many, 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 many years ago. Natalie McComb, who um, is. I think she wrote you a recommendation too. Did she? <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> she may have. She, she, Natalie, as I, I stalked your recommendations. <laughs> a lot of these people, like yeah. The, well, if she did, God bless her. I don't know even know how she how she justified that. But um, <laughs> Natalie knew me in my early stages at Heinz too, and she had a profound influence on just how to how do you really get to the next level thoughtfully and appropriately. Mm-hmm. And 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 this was a defining moment for me. And she probably doesn't even know that, but um, it was wear the suit you want to wear. Ooh. Yeah. Which is Bill, you're playing down, you're not playing up. Mm-hmm. And 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 then translating that statement to it has to be genuine. It has yes. to be thoughtful. It has to be and it gets back to a little bit of advocacy, but if you want to be a VP, do the work that a VP does. Yeah. Right? Engage think like a VP. Like think like a VP. Yeah, would. yeah. And 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 that sounds easy, but mm-hmm. uh, that statement is far too simple. Yes. Of and there's tentacles off of that that are For pronounced. Sure. Mm-hmm. But that came in again. I think my late 30s when she 
I think it was my late third. It may have been mid, but it doesn't matter. It was it was one that I carried with me. I still I still use it to this day. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. What else you got on that list? I don't know. Let me see. Um, we talked about mantras and quotes. Oh, you said redo moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a tough one for me. I I, I don't. I, I do believe that a personal philosophy is no regrets. I tell my kids that all the time. Yeah. Like, look, you you know, nothing wasted. Nothing right? wasted. And and by experience. the way, looking in the rearview mirror, there's nothing that's going to change there. Sure. Right. There's yeah, nothing go that's going to change anyway. in the past. Yeah. You can dwell on it, and I I can do that too. Everyone, mm-hmm. but that is wasted effort, wasted time. Mm-hmm. How do you focus on the future? And I don't, I don't necessarily have. Um, regrets on any experiences i don't have any regrets on decisions that i've made in terms of companies or choices that i've made per se um i have regrets on interactions that i had early where i was you know a punk kid that Mm -hmm. didn't know what he didn't know and i didn't get the you know i i i i feel like gosh i learned a lot but i think there are there are folks that i would just say you know what thank you for being patient you know thank you for dealing with what was clearly not the most optimal version of me. Yeah. Um, so those moments are where I would like to go back and just, you know, kind of give them a big old hug or just say, you know, can I grab you a beer because mm-hmm. you dealt with a lot. And, mm-hmm. um, but not, nothing, you know, I made many mistakes, but those mistakes always, from my vantage point anyway, nothing was so cataclysmic that it was regret. It was, yes. man, I can take a lot of learning from this. Well, yeah, and it's just a constant course correction. Yeah, so I thought that was a really, that was a, that was a, that was a twister for me. That was me. a twist, yeah, yeah, redo moments, yeah. You said best advice, we already hit that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you said personal values. Oh, and I did yeah. write those down if you want. I did, I, I did write those down if yeah, you want. Yeah, I didn't ask you that. Tell I think we've hit your... most of them. I had, I had, um, I'm a big effort guy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these also stem uh, or uh, migrate into my interview philosophy. I always, you know, for me, you know, I didn't grow up, you know, this is like the classic, like, hey, where'd you grow up and what'd you do? Well, I, you know, I cut lawns. I worked at Friendly's. You know, I worked two jobs. Friendly's. Friendly's. I, Friendly's. I was the ice cream scooper, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can make a mean Sunday. Jim Dandy, if you want a Jim Dandy, I can make a <laughs> Mine was the Reese's PC Sunday. Love you know, I worked in, you know, so I, um, and my dad instilled that. My mom instilled that. I worked when I was 12, mm-hmm. you know. So, and not that that is a prerequisite for success, but boy, is it really interesting to see the difference of someone that had to bust it. Yes. To get it done. Yes. Um, doesn't and, take things for granted or expect yeah, and, and, things to be served up. And there's just a whole host of really interesting characteristics that mm-hmm. are very consistent that come off of effort. Yes. And and when I say effort, like personal effort, work effort, you know, and ethic. Yeah. Um, so that's one that's big. I, I um, the one, the one and only time where I will bristle anymore is respect. Mm. And I just believe, and I'm not perfect at it either. Um, and I've always said to people, if I've ever crossed that, I want you to grab me and I want you to hit me with a brick. Yeah. Like that is not, you, do, you, you deserve, you deserve that in yeah. the workplace and frankly in any condition. So mm-hmm. for me, respect, humility, the things that come with that mm-hmm. are such um, underpinnings of future success. Yeah. You know, um, the, we talked this one and this is a tough one to deduce uh, in an interview, but you can see it pretty quickly when you're in a team. It's it's problem identifiers versus uh, solution providers. <gasps> Love that. Right. So a personal philo- – like, and th- this was um, – and, and part of it is has the team been conditioned to just elevate problems mm-hmm. because they don't feel the empowerment or are sure. they just incapable? Are they just complaining? Complaining, fine. Yeah. Or are they just incapable of solutions? Yeah. Like that's just not their skill set, which right. is frankly problematic, right? Because yeah. every every role that at least I think we have at McCormick requires Solutioning. that symbiotic relationship. <laughs> and yeah. I always say, don't drop, you know, a mess on my desk. Like I want to see what you're thinking about yeah. it. Like what, what would you do? You know, let's, let's work this together. So that um, problem identifier, I always say I, I've got plenty of them. I yes. don't need more of them. Yes. I need I need creative solution providers, right? So that's one. Mm, um, that is so true. We talked about caring and empathy, mm-hmm. and I'm a big, you know, not everyone subscribes to this. In fact, I've I've been coached pretty aggressively at times <laughs> in my career on levity, and I believe levity, like, um, is really important to not yeah. take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. It 
um, I probably go a tad too far at times, but but I do I do think that demonstrates accessibility, um, particularly when levity is at your n- not at anyone's expense, right? No, like never no. never disrespectful, never never cutting, um, but it it, is, it 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 suggests approachability. It yeah. suggests you know we're not taking ourselves too seriously. Like yeah. I always say at McCormick, like we're selling food, we're selling some of the best food in the world. This is yes, we are. We Nobody's are gonna die today. Yeah, so, okay. right. And 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 yeah. we're blessed to sell great products. Yes. And, and let's 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 keep all of that in perspective. Yeah. So levity is a good one for me too. Those I are the ones that. I wrote down. Well, you know, I've been coached very aggressively yeah. on that as well. <laughs> so I personally relate to yeah. uh, and give support to yeah levity, levity. and use of it appropriately. Right? Appropriately, yeah. but yeah, because I think it's it creates an openness and. Yeah. You spend so many hours a day working. Sure. So if you can have fun while you're doing it Absolutely. or have an enjoyable environment, why yeah. not? Yeah, exactly right. You know, but so, levity doesn't mean you don't have the ability to be a critical thinker. No, I can move from levity into full on operational mode in about 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, my team's seen that. Um, happened. They're like, what, wait, what just happened? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> wait, it's fun, Bill. Wait, wait, yeah. No, that's <laughs> over. Yeah, we got some stuff to we do. We got to get some, yeah, yeah we got some things done. to get done. Yeah. So, anyway. awesome. Those are the, that, that's, those oh, are the that's ones that so you good. fed me. So, thank you. Yeah. Anything else that's, that's come to mind that we didn't cover? I know we've, we've bounced around, but that's what you get with two ADHD people. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I've really enjoyed it. So, thank you for affording me the opportunity. Hopefully, it's helpful. Hey, if someone gets um, some assistance out of it, that's yeah, great. And, that's um, the goal. And no, I, you know, I guess the only thing I would say is, you know, um, everyone's journey is different. You know, mm-hmm. I've learned, um, you know, f- I, the other thing that I, 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 these are more lessons for my girls. I'm like, you know, don't, don't tolerate not being happy, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and I've, um, and, and, and it's hard when you're particularly early in your career and you're unhappy to try to create a catalyst for change particularly when family's involved or you know you've got personal preference and location and things of that nature but boy to your point on how much how much time we spend Mm -hmm. i think back early when i was unhappy and i tried to muscle through it Mm -hmm. those are again lessons that i learned later which is you know so much of my success is predicated on safety you know safety is something too right and happiness and things of that nature where you can again be your true self so you know, I I just think of that as a as a tremendous catalyst, mm-hmm. um, and that's and that's hard because they're you know unfortunately um, I'd like to think that I'd like to again think that I'm a decent leader that folks say you know what he he genuinely cares about me but I've also encountered folks that aren't and yes. and there's nothing more debilitating and I think yeah. no one deserves that don't stay yeah, yeah that no one deserves my... that and yeah and it doesn't mean you have to get out tomorrow you don't have to do something no. rash but no um, no but I don't... don't feel like you have to stay I guess I should have said it in yeah my, yeah there yeah. are there are options and I do I do feel like especially younger folks who are just starting out in many cases are are chasing a number versus an experience yeah or, and they're more vulnerable. You know, Right. Like they don't they also they also don't like, you know, the the other thing that and and you and I talked about this many years ago is the power of culture. And it's really Mm -hmm. hard to deduce what the culture is and Mm -hmm. finding what culture fits you. And and not all cultures, not all cultures would work for me, but they would work for other people. Right. And And there's subcultures within a company. So, you know, uh, if 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 I love working for you and I like the culture you've created within our department and our team, great. But then suddenly if you move to another department. And I get somebody else in as a my leader. Same company could be a completely different subculture 100%. that comes in. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that as I um, as I talk to people early in their career, I try. That is the one area where you try to spend some time on how do you deduce that, yes. right? And how do yes. you how do you think about what you're walking into? Yeah, and cause, and because really until you walk into it, you don't, you don't know. know. But yeah, but there knowing are your ways... values. I mean, you talked about values. I think mm-hmm. being aware of what your own personal values are and then how they ladder up to whatever yep. organization you're joining. No doubt. And how they reapply. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. And But that would be the only other uh, couple things that I would uh, offer you at this yeah, time. That's awesome. Yeah, Thank I enjoyed you. it. Me yeah. too. Yeah, thanks. And you get the award for driving the farthest distance to be uh, a guest on this show. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Yeah, but I was coming back to Pittsburgh. So, well, you don't you have know. to mention that part. Yeah. <laughs> I drove four hours, people. He drove four yeah. hours to be here. <laughs> All right. Well, given that you and I both love levity, uh, oh. we have oh, these are the improv- lightning round. Oh, the lightning round. I yes. forgot that we were going to do a lightning yeah, round. Yeah, the okay. lightning okay. round, Okay, so Bill. I feel like we – okay. Okay, hang on. Let me pull my um, 
Is this like literally lightning round? Like, yeah. So this is how it works. Okay. Uh, answer as many questions as you can oh, in sixty seconds. Oh, I'm not good with this. This is not. <laughs> This this is yeah. But you're competitive, so let's. See I am, how you but do. I'm also gonna freeze up. This is gonna be high pressure. Okay, are right. you ready? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> when your mark gets set, go. What season best fits your personality? Oh, summer. Okay. Yes, finally. <laughs> What's your most used emoji in text? Oh, um, it's the scrunchy kind of like squirrely um, face. I can't even describe it. It's like it's like what? Like the awkward face. Yeah, the like, awkward. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. What book, song, movie, or podcast has had the greatest impact on your life? Oh, um, gosh. Book, song, or podcast? I would think any any Mitch album book would have an impact on me. Oh, yeah, good one. Okay. What's something about you that surprises people when they first hear it? They don't know I ever wrote poetry. Uh, wrote poetry. Wrote poetry. Ooh, okay. That's going to be the next episode. Okay. Back <laughs> on. Uh, fill in the blank. I spend too much money on bicycles. Yeah, knew that. Uh, what celebrity would you want to play you in a movie? Oh, um, it, it, who who was Goose in uh, Top Gun? <laughs> Anthony Edwards, <Yes>! right? <laughs> I've been told, I, I, and I think I look like him right now too. I think, how did I do? You did. Great. I got stuck on. I got stuck on uh, on the book song on the book your song. podcast. Yeah, you know, you could always just say this podcast. I could have. Yeah, I could have just, but I, you know, I wanted to provide some texture that people could potentially gravitate to. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, oh, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for driving four hours. To yeah, be absolutely. Here. This has been awesome. I enjoyed it. I'll come have you come back. Okay, and you can read poetry. That you poetry. Wrote. Yeah, yes. it's 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 from high school, but yeah. <laughs> I probably could give you another one that's uh, yeah unknown, like javelin thrower. How javelin thrower. Yeah, I, nice. I did that in high school and college. Did you do jarts? Yeah, no, 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 not so much. No, <laughs> never done pickleball either. I got to do that for the first. Super fun. Super I've heard. Fun. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah, yeah. highly recommended. Okay, got to okay. get after it. All right, then yeah. maybe that'll be the next video podcast. Bill and Laura play pickleball. Yeah, we could have like a series of stuff that Bill and Laura do. I like that. That's good. <laughs> I love it. All, all right. right, thank you. Well, that's all the time we have on today's episode. Be sure to join us on our next episode of Leadership Rediscovered. And until then, keep shining, everyone.